Okay, we're going to do Niagara File, another cookbook recipe. Um, and again, here's the website if you want to look at um, any of uh, the latest and greatest NiFi stuff I put up there. And again, if you have any questions or any issues with uh, NiFi that, you know, I'd love to try and help you out, just um, send them to this uh, uh, email address uh, on the bottom here. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the next recipe. Okay, this will be recipe number seven, and the problem we're trying to solve with this one is um, is instead of uh, using the default MIME type, which uh, NiFi sets for us when we're sending out HTTP requests to other servers or other systems, um, we want to set that to something else. So the default one is uh, application octet stream, and say for example we want to set it to something else uh, like application j application slash JSON. Uh, how do we do that? Well. How we do that is we just override that attribute that we send out to the HTTP through the HTTP request. And in this case, what we're going to do is add a update attribute processor just prior before us sending the payload out to our put HTTP request. And then what we do in that update attribute is we create a new attribute type um, called mime.type, and then we set the value to that to whatever we want the mime type to be. So how it works is uh, NiFi, when you're sending out uh, HTTP requests, you know, you're doing your invoke HTTP or whatever it is you want to do, um, you got to have a content type set. set. And what uh, NiFi does is it actually automatically sets that to to be application octet stream. And sometimes there's a case where you won't want it to be that. You want it to be text, text, you know, text or HTML or in the example I'm showing, application.json. And it's nice to be able to override that. So what you do is, like I said, we just add the new update uh, attribute processor just before we send out our HTTP requests. And in that update pro attribute processor, we're going to go ahead and create a new property, which is already there, really. I mean, mime.type is it's, it's kind of there in the HTTP request, but we're going to override it, basically, in our update attribute processor. And we'll set it, in this case, if we're going to do JSON, we'll set the mime type to application slash JSON. So again... We're going to set the MIME type just before we send our invoke HTTP request. And what's going to be in that update attribute in this instance is we're going to have the MIME type set to application slash JSON. Again, whatever you want to set it to for your MIME type, this is where you would do it and how you would do it. Um, and the other thing we want to make sure is that we're going to pass all of the attributes over to our, through our HTTP request. So actually, within the invoke HTTP, there's a field called attributes to send. And I believe that's empty when you uh, first um, create the processor or drop it into your um, graph area. And you just want to make that, I just set that to everything. If you want to set it to mime.type, that's fine. Um, I just set it to everything so we can set everyth send everything through. Um, look down here at the bottom, he says attributes to send. You see the uh, parentheses dot star parentheses that just sends, says send all of our attributes through <coughs> to the uh, destination um, HTTP uh, server. And then we all also want to make sure if you're listening on NiFi to have our listen HTTP processor to receive all the attributes. So again, we'll do the uh, paren dot star to make sure we receive everything like I show here. Okay, so make sure you set both of those so all the attributes get sent over and all of them get received as well. So let's look at this through a little video demonstration. So whenever you send an HTTP request, you have a lot of different types of MIME types associated with the data. Uh, this website here called freeformatter.com uh, can show you quite a list of different types of uh, content types or MIME types there are depending on the type of data you're sending over. Um, there's just a numerous amount of them. Um, as an example, um, let's see what we can see here. Um, let me look for, let's see, JSON. So for JSON type of data, you want to set the MIME type to application slash JSON. Um, and like I said before, when you're um, the default for NiFi for sending um, data, if you don't set it ahead, if you don't set the MIME type. Uh, I can show you right here the type. It's, it's, it assumes it's binary data, and the type's going to be application octet stream. So that'll be your default MIME type unless you decide to overwrite it, which is what I'm going to show you how to do now. So there not, our NiFi flow I'm going to use in this example, it's pretty simple. Um, I generate a flow file. 
Um, typical thing, it's a one kilobyte file, generate every 10 seconds. Uh, it's just a binary file, nothing special. So we'll send, like I said, we'll send one of those out every 10 seconds. And then we'll send it to our, use our invoke, invoke HTTP, and we'll send it to port, I have a post request, send it to port 12345 slash content listener. Uh, I set the attributes, I'm going to send all the attributes over, so you can see the dot star there that we talked about before. And then I'm just going to set up a listener, I'm going to listen on the port 12345, set the path, the content listener. And then I'm also going to set the um, attributes to receive them all, you know, again, dot star, to make sure I get all the attributes. And I'm just going to log all these so I can show you what it's, it looks like. I sent the uh, log level to info, and we'll set the bulletin board level to debug, so we'll be able to look at these data through our uh, debugger, through our log uh, window. So let's go ahead and send a file over. Okay, you can see down there we got a file, lower, lower right, log attributes. So let's look at the logs. And if you can see here, here's all the data associated with that flow file. And there should be an HTTP request that says content type. There it is. And the content type you can see is set to application slash octet dash stream. Okay, we did not set that. Now if I set that for us when we sent the file. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and override that to something else. So let's go ahead and we're going to add an uh, update attribute processor. And now we're going to go ahead and set the MIME type. So we're going to have an actual property called MIME.type. And we're going to set the MIME type to be um, used uh, for associated with JSON. So it'll be application slash JSON. So we'll assume that we're sending JSON data in this case. So let's go ahead and put that at update attribute into our flow now. We'll give it a name so we can make it easier to read. So I'll set MIME type. And now let's go ahead and put that in our flow. Okay, so all I did was I'm going to override the MIME type by adding this update attribute. So what we're going to do is send the packet through again and take a look at the results. I'll send one through. Look at the logs. And if we look at, let's wait, let's wait 10 seconds for one to get generated again. Okay, so if you look at the, uh, look at the, uh, the uh, attributes associated with this, you see the uh, MIME type is set to application slash JSON. Okay, it's no surprise we set the MIME type there. But if you look up above where it says content type, it now says application slash JSON. So we were over to override the default content type by adding this update attribute. 